Hey everyone, it's Mo here. In this video, we are going to go over grid and cycle decisions. If you don't know what a cycle or an OS is, then I suggest you look at the links in the description to find out. Now I'm going to show you the common ways you gain or lose grid. For more detail, check out the description for a full list of values. Chain shift is broken, and the only way we get it is if we win the cycle. The first step to winning the cycle is looking at it. High level players claim that they look at the cycle a whopping 80% of the time. Personally, I suggest looking at the cycle when it is halfway done. This is because grid can easily move in either player's favour in a short amount of time. However, you shouldn't feed the opponent grid before the halfway point and make it impossible to catch up later on. Okay, now that you are looking at the cycle, you should choose what to do depending on the current game state. You might be asking, what does the game state mean? Well, it's simple if you find out by asking yourself two questions. Are you on offense or defense? And are you ahead in grid or behind? Your answers to these questions determine the game state defined by which characters attacking, as well as the current grid status. The rest of this video will explain these four combinations, or game states, starting with offense with a grid advantage. Being on offense means you have more options, and since you're in a grid advantage, if you do nothing, you will eventually win the cycle. Therefore, it's ideal to just take the least risky option and checkmate the opponent. Here's some examples. Firstly, Foxoff notices that he has the grid lead and is on offense. Then he decides to do nothing, securing the cycle with no risk. If you still want to keep up the pressure, then you have to be mindful of green shields by doing extremely short block strings. Careful of baiting green shield for too long, as it can be predictable, leading to a mash out. An alternative way to carry on pressure while baiting green shields is to simply assault. This is because Assault has the potential to jump over low pokes and crush blue shields. In this game state, doing a throw is the worst option you can take. It sucks because if they tech, they get a huge 4 block swing, which is too risky when you're in the lead. In summary, on offense with a grid lead, you should minimize any risks by baiting the opponent's green shield and not throwing them. Compared to the last day, you are on defense and vulnerable to throw. So it's time to weigh your options and decide on if you should mash, tech a throw, or even take a throw to win the cycle. Redblade has a grid lead of more than two blocks, so he decides to take a throw here instead of taking the risk of getting his OS crushed. However, in this example, Cello cannot afford to take the throw, so committing to an OS is the correct play. Mashing becomes stronger in this state, because the opponent needs to take more risks to win the cycle. Green shielding on a grid advantage is an unnecessary risk, as you would have gotten the cycle anyway, blocking. Likewise, whiffing a blue shield is even worse, because getting grid broken is fatal in terms of your chance of winning the next cycle. The choices you can take are varied. However, it's important to understand that you have to abandon the thought of shielding completely when you are at a grid advantage. Now we will look at playing offense with a grid disadvantage. Despite being an offense, you're now behind in grid. So if the opponent just waits there, you will lose the cycle. To avoid this, you should attempt to throw, assault, or concentrate. Throw gives you two grid and the risk of them taking is affordable in your situation. Winning the cycle with Assault can be pretty varied in how you go about it. Empty Assaulting is useful to get grid, while not risking blue shield from the opponent. Assault is useful to crush OS's, and the jump attack can be timed to hit after the cycle ends to prevent grid loss to shield. If the opponent is willing to block, then it's viable to stop pressure just to concentrate and claim the cycle. Here is what happens when you are not aggressive enough with a grid disadvantage.
When behind on grid, you have to throw, assault, or concentrate on offense. Being aggressive and reading your opponent's defensive habits will help you secure the cycle more often in this state. This is the worst state to be in. You have to often gamble your life to gain grid since you have limited freedom in what you can do. Green shielding, teching throws and mashing are the least risky choices in this state. The most risky choice you can do is simping for the cycle, which is blue shielding regardless of the situation, to get a crumb of grid. Here is a classic example of green shielding a block string to acquire the cycle. An even better scenario is if the opponent gives you a chance to tech a throw so you can cash in on the full grid swing. Mashing actually works at a grid deficit because the opponent doesn't want to commit to long block strings and get shielded. If they block, then it at least switches the roles of offense and defense. You should be careful when simping for grid because you can get overheaded or thrown. Here is a lovely compilation showcasing this. As a quick recap, in this state you have to do risky actions to win the cycle and it is not advised to overly simp for grid. To summarize the four states, in offense you have more freedom in your actions, while in defense you have less freedom and have the risk of getting thrown. In grid advantage you should do the least risky approach to win the cycle, while in grid disadvantage you have to take a more risky approach. Sometimes you have to decide when attempting to win the cycle is too risky and just forfeiting is better. This dilemma is ever present during situations where it's almost impossible to catch up to the opponent's cycle. You can either risk an aggressive approach and fish for a grid break, or if your character has good neutral, you can concede the cycle and set up a favorable position for yourself. When searching all of this tournament footage, I noticed that most of the time, somebody is getting comboed towards the end of the cycle. Thankfully, there are a number of actions that can be taken to win the cycle during a combo. The easiest way is to end the combo quickly, then concentrate towards the end of the cycle. Alternatively, a character specific approach is to end the combo quickly again, then use a grid generating move to get the cycle like Gordo's assimilation. If the opponent gets Vopal while you're comboing them, then you can simply Vopal strip using VO, which costs at least 100 meter. On the other hand, set play characters usually benefit more from using their 100 meter and going into a setup, like Batista or Carmine. If you chain shift or CVO, you enter a mode for a while called transfer state, which is the white flashing line next to the grid. During transfer state, any grid gain is halted, including concentrate, and it doesn't go away until the opponent techs and is actionable. So make sure to end your combo early after chain shift to avoid this issue. Now we are getting into our summary and tip section. Make sure to end your combo early, then concentrate, and then grid generating moves if you have them, and full push strip the opponent during a combo to win the cycle. No matter what state you are in, you shouldn't use force function, backdash, or backtech when the cycle is about to end, because they all lose grid unnecessarily. This project took two months and was stressful at times, but I'm happy with how it turned out. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two. I'm going to head out now, but feel free to rewatch sections and contact me if you're stuck on anything. Peace out.